Hi, I'm Neely to Tally Autos and today I'm going to be talking about a customer's Fiat Maria weekend. It's a car I've not seen very often in the last sort of 15, 20 years, so I thought you guys might like to uh, have a quick video on it, just uh, seeing how they held up and uh, reminding ourselves of some of the design cues on them, which were quite unique. So let's have a look around it. The Fiat Maria and the Maria Weekend came to the UK in 1996. It came with several options. The petrol versions were a 1.6, a 1.8 and the 2 litre 20 valve. And you also had two diesel options, the 1.9 diesel and the 2.4. It came in three trim forms, the SX which was the basic one, the ELX and the HLX which was the model to go for. Now the Maria didn't prove very popular in the UK but it did do better elsewhere in the world and I do believe it was still in production until 2007 in Brazil but it did stop in the UK in 2002 where it was replaced by the Fiat Stilo which proved to be just as unpopular as the Maria and the Tempera before that. So Fiat have not really had much success when it came to estate cars I think after the Stilo we had the Chroma, which was also uh, just as unpopular. Now I thought these were quite a unique styling when they first came out. Estates back in the early 90s were quite boxy, especially the Volvos. I think the first sort of fully rounded car that I can think of off my head right now was the uh, Mark 1 Mondeo, the bubble car. But this has got some very nice styling cues about it, even today it holds up quite well, especially the front end. The front end is definitely my best feature on this car. The headlights with a dark background. It looks quite menacing and quite tight and squinted at the front and I do uh, rather like that. Now this is based on the Fiat Bravo Brava. Uh, it's just a slightly extended platform. It's a sort of one inch longer at the front and uh, several inches larger at the back to uh, accommodate the uh, bigger boot space but it's not actually any wider or bigger inside than a Fiat Brava. Rear lights are quite unique for a car of this era as well, being uh, so high, uh, similar to the Punto, but three individual lenses. From a rightly, the boot floor also drops down so you can have very easy access to the car. It's also a very nice colour as well, this sort of the pearlescent uh, blue, similar to the colour found on the GTV, wouldn't surprise me if it's the same to be honest. Let's have a little look on the inside. Now I was never a fan of the interiors on these back in the day, I loved the Punto interior but was never a fan of the Maria. I think I couldn't get on with the dashboard, let me show you what I mean. <coughs> now the dials I never really got on with them, they're sort of the least Italian thing on the car and also the, the centre of the dash it just didn't seem very pleasing to the eye especially when you had the original stereo inside with a pop open tape deck it was sort of very very uh, retro I also wasn't a fan of the velour interior, the upholstery but you know, as, as a car that was, it is now 24 years old it's held up pretty well, the materials are still strong, there's no sticky plastics. Yes, yeah, some of the plastics are cheap, but they have held up very well indeed. Everything works as it should. Missing a little cover off there, but uh, other than that, everything is still tight and bolted together. One of the things I do love about the Mario was the 20 valve engine. Such a lovely sounding engine. 
And also considering this car has done nigh on 200,000 miles, it still sounds pretty sweet. We do have a stink of burning oil coming into the cabin, but hopefully that's just the uh, rocket gasket seal. We'll have a look in a minute anyway. So let's get it inside and on the ramp, and we shall have a look at the engine and have a look underneath it. Right, let's take a look on the underside now, and what surprised me from the off is how much room is under on the underside of this engine bay. You could probably take the gearbox out without having to actually visit the top of the engine. It is uh, vast amounts of space under here. I mean, even accessing the alternator really easily. Servicing, no problem at all. We do have a few oil leaks, but that's expected for a car which has done nearly 200,000. We've got a hole in the exhaust. Masses of oil all over the bottom of the gearbox. But mechanically, all the suspension bushes and suspension components have all been sort of really well looked after or replaced during in its life. Because I wouldn't imagine they'd come with blue ones standard from the factory. Um, and now on to the reason the car was actually in the workshop was there was a few little bits of rust. And if you've seen the Punto video, uh, this isn't as bad, but uh, it is uh, getting there. So we shall start on the good side. We have a massive hole in the floor. And that would probably want replacing all the way along because you've got little holes coming. Bigger hole there, all the way along. Uh, nice big sort of almost fish shaped hole in the sill. The sort of chassis strengthening has totally gone from there. It's just totally rusted away. The boot floor is probably about to fall out, to be honest. We've got a massive hole there. Holes all the way along the seam of the boot floor. The rear is not too bad, um, but this is now the worst side. We have a huge hole there. Not much left there to weld. From the look of it, it's been bodged over the years. I'm speaking to the customer, the guy had siliconed, the last owner, sorry, not the guy who's got it now, had silicone loads of metal plates underneath it and bits of cardboard and stuff to uh, hide the rust and get it through its MOT. So the owner of it now was under the right mind of uh, trying to get it repaired and, and bringing it over to me to uh, get a quote on getting the rust done. But unfortunately, my advice is this is just far too gone for the amount of money he's going to have to spend on it. And going a massive hole in the cell. I was struggling to actually get it on, a, on the ramp here because there is nothing left of that rear corner. That is actually, I would say, worse than the Punto. Just that little bit anyway. But you can see, yeah, it's all been um, bodged over many years. There's layers of filler, stone chip and... All stuff like that, which isn't very nice. And all the way along the driver's side floor is pretty much gone. And all at the front there, there's nothing left of the front wing. It's all gone. So yeah, um, whether Fiat Maria's rust in general quite badly, I don't know, because I've never really worked on them before. I did own one many, many years ago when they were probably only about four or five years old. I owned one briefly, but uh, I don't know much about them mechanically other than the 20 valve engine. Now under the engine bay, it's sort of typical Fiat 20 valve engine bay. There's not much, many differences from the Fiat Coupe. So again, very easy to work on, apart from doing a cam belt because you have no room there at all. You do have to make a special tool to get uh, into there to get this cover off with a short and dry bit. But so yeah, Fiat 20 valve engines are one of my favourites. They produced a lot of power. I think 146 horsepower for just a naturally aspirated engine back in the early 90s was pretty good. I mean, it was outperforming the Mondeo ST24 engine, which was a 2.5. I think that came in at 240 horsepower or something around that. And uh, these sounded one hell of a lot nicer than the uh, equivalent uh, Ford engine. So unfortunately, I think this one is for the big scrapyard in the sky, unless somebody wants to save it. The owner has told me that he would like somebody to save it, and he doesn't really want to sell it for very much money. So if any of you guys are interested in it, send me an email or comment below, and I'm sure the owner will be watching the comments, and uh, you can get in contact with each other and see what can be done with it. But yeah, it would be nice to save it. In my eyes, it's way economically beyond repair. 
But, uh, you know, some people do want to save things. Some people are crazy, like me with the punter over there. But, uh, hmm, yeah. It would be a shame to see it die because there are so few of them left on the roads nowadays. So there we go, guys. That is the uh, Fiat Maria. Not holding up very well in these uh, modern times, but uh, it was nice to reminisce over something that uh, I used to own many years ago. Um, so what I'm thinking now is this could be a new sort of um, feature on the channel. So if you've got a car that's not been featured before, something a little bit rarer, something older, and you want it featured in a video, just uh, let me know. Send me an email. Um, we can discuss about getting into the unit and doing a, a similar sort of video. Uh, maybe if I've got more time, we can uh, film something a little bit better and longer. But uh, yeah, it was very nice to see that. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.